Are you all ready? <coughs> ready? Ready? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call to order the Public Works Committee meeting for Tuesday, April 11th, 2017. First order of business is roll call and determination of quorum. Brenda, please. Doyle? Here. Estes? Here. Solomon? Here. Drew? Here. Nordstrom? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Next order of business is to adopt the agenda. Do I have any changes? If not, I would entertain a motion to adopt. Make a motion to approve. Motion by Solomon, second by Drew, to approve this agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Agenda is adopted. Now is the time for general public comment, which is a time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the committee on any issue not limited to items on the agenda. Action, however, will not be taken at the meeting on any issue not on this agenda except by placement thereon by unanimous vote of the alderman present. Double checking, I have no general public comment forms, so we'll move on to consent items 1 through 13. Again, seeing no public speaker request forms, I will open and close public comment and then ask the committee to um, remove, if they'd like, any items 1 through 13 for separate consideration. Alderman Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pull number two, please. Two. Any others? If not, I'd entertain a motion for the balance. I have a motion by Drew, second by Estes, to approve the consent calendar, items 1 through 13, with the exception of number 2. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We're on now to item number 2, which is Fire Station 5 improvements at an estimated cost of half a million dollars. Alderman Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. First, I'd like to make a motion to approve if I could get a second and hold the floor. Uh, thank you. If I can ask a question to our acting chief. Certainly. We good to go? All right. Hey, do you want to tell me a little bit about what the needs are right now in the facility and what these improvements are going to do? Sure. Uh, Fire Station 5 out on 2902 Park Drive. It was built in 1979. Um, and back uh, during that era, uh, there was an open dorm uh, uh, floor plan that was in all the stations and so there was just a bunch of you know beds in one room uh, what this does is is this project will move us to where we have six individual dorm rooms much like all the other stations we have um, that was kind of at a push years ago through NFPA 1500 for health and safety of firefighters as well as um, you know uh, having males and female firefighters uh, having their own dorm room mm -hmm. so there's about a 1400 square foot addition that'll be on station 5 um, that'll, most of that is the uh, individual dorm rooms and then also a physical uh, fitness training room. There, we're, currently we're doing that on the apparatus floor where the fire trucks are and this will move that physical fitness uh, room into its own room. And then as far as the remodel of the additional living quarters or the, the current living quarters, uh, we're removing one bathroom uh, to make a little more room in the kitchen dining room area. Uh, and, and a lot bigger uh, office area for the firefighters and fire officers that are out there. Mm -hmm. So does that answer all those questions? Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, I, I read the, the background on it, but I knew that there was probably a little bit more kind of interesting to hear about the way they're designed these days versus back in the day. So sure. thank you. So I want to make sure, Brenda, you caught that it was Alderman Nordstrom that seconded that. Okay. Alderman Nordstrom, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Rod, uh, uh, or Chief, would you um, uh, tell us the date when that was built again? What era that? Okay. Knowing that this question might be coming, I looked up in my records and I saw that it was built in 1979 originally. Uh, we've done some minor improvements uh, on that station through the years, most notably uh, a roof, siding, windows, um, you know, normal upkeep type of things, but never have added on to it. Uh, we did uh, add a complete new generator set uh, back in 07 as well, but uh, this will be the first addition onto that building. 1979, and I moved to the city in 1980, so it just tells us how far back that was uh, built. And then, uh, and then the building codes what were allowed back in that period, what what was uh, used for design back then, and how that really hasn't updated the door really hasn't changed you know that the facility. station was built very yeah. well in 79 um, the yes. apparatus floor is all block uh, concrete construction walls so it's it's a little settlement and it stood the test of time uh, the living quarters are wood frame construction um, we did add a fire sprinkler to that whole building back in 2011 as well so we are sprinkler co uh, covered as well thank you chief any further discussion if not the motion on the floor is to approve item number two Seeing none, all in favor? 
Aye. All opposed, same sign. Amendment two carries. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the consent calendar. We are not uh, not now on to non-consent items 14 through 17. Since we really probably only have discussion on two, if you gentlemen are okay with waiting until your item and we'll just have you speak at that time, okay, we'll get some of this other stuff discharged earlier. Um, we'll just go ahead and go on to item number 14 then, the Sustainability Committee annual update. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I move to um, take item number 14 and move it to Monday for the, full, for the presentation to be in front of the full council. I have a motion and a second. Motion by Drew, second by Estes to move this to council without recommendation for the sole purpose of having the presentation given to the full council rather than twice. Any objection? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item number 14 is carried to council without recommendation. Item number 15, which is an update on the FEMA flood insurance rate map. <laughs> Alder Woman Drew. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to also move this item to Monday night for the full council. Okay. For the same reason, I um, have a motion and a, and a second by Solomon to mm -hmm. send this to council without recommendation just for the purposes of having the, a single presentation done to the full council. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, everybody. We're now on to item number 16, which is appeal of a denied exception request from KTM Design Solutions on behalf of Haig Brothers LLC to waive curb, gutter, water, and sewer in Samus Trail and allow for a 26-foot wide paved service with grass ditches and sidewalks in a 70-foot right-of-way. I have two speaker request forms. You have a preference to who goes first? Mike Stetson? If you would state your affiliation with the project and name for the record, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, my name is Mike Stetson. I'm from KTM Design Solutions, and I'm here on behalf of Haig Brothers LLC, the applicant. Um, and so we're here to discuss the, the appeal of the staff's decisions for improvements along Samus Trail. And uh, I'd like to start with uh, going just kind of over some of the project location. So Samus Trail is an existing gravel road on the southern boundary of Moon Meadows, and it uh, provides access to two residential houses to the south. And there's no access to Mount Rushmore, War, Mount Rushmore Road on the west side. Um, and so the, the Meadows Apartments and future uh, lots and Moon Meadows drives have access and utilities from uh, Moon Meadows um, Drive. And so there won't be any um, access or utilities coming off of Samus Trail for this subdivision. Uh, and this is just a uh, further zoomed in version of Moon Meadows subdivision. And so here's a proposed typical section for Samus Trail. It'll have a 26 foot wide paved surface, vegetated ditches, and a sidewalk along the property lines. Um, and so we're proposing to not install curb and gutter, water, sewer, or street light conduits. And there's currently vegetated ditches in the Samus Trail right away. So just a couple of the, the benefits of vegetated ditches. Um, they provide water quality benefits. And uh, I'd like to just highlight a couple of the Rapid City Stormwater Quality Manual. Um, sections and so section 2.1.1 states that the total runoff increases development increases and this is uh, a lot of times made worse by gutter and storm sewers and uh, section 2.3.7 says that grass swales or uh, vegetated dishes can be used instead of curb and gutters and some of the water quality benefits are just reduces downstream uh, runoff and peak flows by increasing evaporation and uh, groundwater recharge and it reduces pollutants as well from the from the stormwater and so usgs did a, a study a couple years ago for rapid city of the arrowhead drainage basin the mead hawthorne drainage basins and they analyzed total uh, suspended solids and bacteria in the stormwater runoff and just to kind of a the arrowhead drainage basin is primarily grass ditches um, and it's located along sheridan lake road the mead hawthorne drainage basin is primarily curb and gutter and storm sewers and it's ro located in the robinsdale um, neighborhood so a couple of the report findings is the overhead drainage basin have, had t half the total suspended solids and a third of the E. coli in the stormwater compared to the Mead Hawthorne. And a lot of this was um, due to the grass ditches and arrowheads for the decreases. Um, just a couple of points in the, the water and sanitary sewers in Samus Trail. Um, so a water main and sanitary sewer in, in Samus Trail wouldn't connect to any water sewer mains existing in Rapid City. Uh, the nearest ones are along Moon Meadows Drive. So these would be dry mains and they begin to deteriorate, um, such as water main valves and fittings corroding while not for any service currently. So these are not needed for Moon Meadows subdivision and they wouldn't provide any existing benefit as well. 
So we are requesting to construct a 26 foot wide paved surface with grass ditches and sidewalks along the Sandwich Trail. We're asking for the, to waive the requirement to install curb and gutter, street light conduit, and water and sewers. Thank you. Thank you, and I presume you would stand by for questions if the committee members have any. Thank you, That's sir. Good. Uh, next, we'll call up Kent Haig on the same item. Name and affiliation with the project for the Yes, uh, good afternoon. My name is Kent Haig. I'm uh, president, CEO, all around Chief Cook and Bottle Washer, and managing member of uh, the uh, Haig Brothers LLC entity that owns the land and is the applicant. Um, a, a bit about this. Uh, number one, I'll preface my comments on that. I'm not your average evil developer, to the meaning that um, the, the, uh, what I found out about my, based on my work on two projects, one in Meade County and this one, especially since it's an agricultural setting, both sides are currently agricultural of Samus Trail. Uh, what I found out over the past year and a half regarding uh, uh, stormwater drainage and the detrimental effects of curb and gutter, as it was as it was displayed up there, over um, how much more you know, how much more detrimental it is to environmental water uh, shed, um, stormwater, you name it, versus uh, the curb and gutter versus the uh, much less negative effects of vegetated ditches. Currently, there are vegetated ditches there. The big thing on this is that every all the development in uh, Moon on, in the subdivision, or excuse me, in the improvements that we're planning between Samus Trail and Moon Meadows Drive. All the improvements, as was mentioned, water, sewer, drainage, oversized storm sewer, all of it either is supplied, the utilities are supplied from Moon Meadows, and all the drainage goes to Moon Meadows. And again, we oversize the, the, uh, uh, no, the um, stormwater sewer to accommodate that. We're also doing a regional retention pond in the extreme uh, uh, northeast corner of the property, along with uh, the uh, uh, orthopedic land uh, uh, company that uh, owns the land adjacent to us, they will be participating in that. But that, uh, again, is regarding storm sewer, is going to be a collection point, a regional collection point for the, for the entire area, including all of this area. So the ditches along Samus will not be used for excess impervious surface drainage from the development north of it. Uh, it will only experience additional runoff due to impervious surface uh, that's gonna be the black, actually the blacktop pavement on top of the current Samus Trail. And so to take that drainage, that additional impervious drainage, put it in a gutter and, and it disperse it at certain points, just like uh, all the research points out, creates an additional, uh, all the negatives of all the additional um, uh, contaminants and potential uh, flooding and those types of things that you get with curb and gutter. I'm not against curb and gutter. I think many places it's the only thing you can do, and that's, that's the best we can do. Here, however, we have a very unique opportunity to use vegetated ditches as per the recommendation of, of engineering and also the extensive studies of, of the School of Mines, uh, which we've also teamed up on this project and others with, uh, to demonstrate that vegetated ditches are the way to eliminate, or excuse me, not to eliminate, but significantly lessen groundwater contamination. Currently, the discharge from uh, Samus Trail largely goes uh, across or underneath and then to the land to the south, which is ranch land. All the land to the south of this is ranch land owned by Frank Comerford, who does not intend on selling anytime soon, uh, for, for a very long time. So there's one other house that's serviced by this entire street. The history of this, and I, I apologize, if, unless you have questions, uh, I would ask that I'd be able to conclude. Um, the history of this, Madam Chair, is that uh, when we started the project uh, that uh, is known otherwise as also as TIF 70, we did um, a number of things to uh, maximize the quality and be consistent with, uh, with city uh, upcoming policies like regional drainage rather than little tiny drainage ponds all over for each business. We've, we've done that. We've gone concrete road instead of pavement and so forth. This is in keeping with the aspect of doing what we can to uh, have the minimum impact, a low impact development, in other words. Uh, what the little shocker on this is, and when we were planning all this, uh, 
it was contemplated in the TIF agreement, uh, the developer's agreement and the plan. There's actually line items of expenses that we did not use. It contemplated the realignment of Samus Trail to the south uh, on along our actual border. Currently, we'll still own both sides of Samus Trail. Uh, but we, it, was, it was clearly contemplated in that agreement that it would stay gravel. Now, I understand policies change, ordinances changes, and so forth, but the particular project that we are requesting this uh, whole process for and this 700, rough, roughly 700 feet of Samus Trail that we're developing or, or asked to be developed into full city specification wasn't even contemplated at the time of entering into this project. Uh, and that's evidenced by the other agreements that we have with the city. My point is, is that it, it's about 450 to $500,000 of improvements. Now, this is where the monetary aspect comes in. In order to be able to get our certificate of occupancy for uh, the apartment complex, uh, we are going to be required to do all full improvements unless uh, some variances are granted. We don't have a problem uh, increasing the right-of-way to 70 feet, which is, which is all on our, our property, and that's fine. Uh, we don't have a problem uh, in, in paving because we also know that one of the tremendous benefits is dust mitigation. Uh, we don't have a problem uh, putting a sidewalk in because we think to some degree that might service some people from the from the department complex that want to walk on that side of the subdivision or the complex for some reason. But when it comes to putting in water and sewer mains, which will sit there and deteriorate till someday uh, that road builds out because there's some use on the south side, uh, it seems to me to be an unintended consequence of a blatant, blatant or blanket application of the ordinance. Uh, the other thing is the curb and gutter will have all the detrimental effects we talked about, and currently it's vegetated ditch. It is an agricultural area. It is permitted under ordinance to allow uh, vegetated ditches when uh, possible or when applicable. So I, th I think we're asking, uh, well, I know what we're asking uh, this uh, committee to do is to look at it from a common sense standpoint, not only fiscally, but water quality wise. And, uh, and uh, from when you end up eventually hooking up to that, uh, if ever, um, that those water and sewer mains not just be left in there to, uh, to deteriorate over time. All right, thank you. I presume you would also stand by for questions should the committee members Absolutely. have any? Thank you. Yes, so we'll go ahead and open it. Um, for committee members, uh, questions, comments, um, either of the applicants or of staff on this issue, on item number 16. Alderman Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, ask a question to Dale Tech, please. Dale, this came up uh, our last public works meeting as well, but these water and sewer mains that may not be used and concern about installing them and having them deteriorate, can you tell me what the likelihood of that is? And, and and I guess what the city's viewpoint is on that? I guess I'd like to begin by pointing out some other uh, facilities that will be required as part of the subdivision that uh, Hague Brothers LLC will be doing. Currently, they're just platting off a lot that's kind of in the middle of the property that they own. So yes, indeed, the, um, the letter of the ordinance states that they have to make improvements in adjacent right-of-ways. So um, there would be water and sewer that would be constructed in a chunk. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time they get done developing all the other property, though, it should be a contiguous um, setting. Uh, they have not done any analysis to, to show what the service boundary of the sewer would be. So. We don't know what the limits and extents of the sewer. Uh, I would prefer that some additional analysis be done to show what can be built there uh, before we just waive the requirement to build it. Uh, and the same goes with water. There's a water main uh, that exists up in, in Moon Meadows Drive that would easily be extended upon the full subdivision of this property. So uh, back to your original question, uh, you know, our water and sewer that we're putting in the ground uh, is expected to last 75 years. Um, so if you put in dry water, dry sewer mains, that infrastructure is designed to be buried under the ground and should last quite a long time. I would anticipate that this area will be fully developed within the next 75 years. I think that's fairly safe to say. Uh, so as far as 
placing that infrastructure in the ground, I don't believe that it's going to rapidly deteriorate without use as it's designed to be buried in the ground. All right, second question for you is, I read the material that they provided regarding, and, and just heard their comments regarding the vegetative ditches and, and uh, the research that it lessens the groundwater contamination. Um, can you tell me, is that true at all water levels? Uh, from your, from your, your background, is that a generally accepted practice? versus curb and gutter, and in this situation, is, is that reasonable? We have two competing criteria, if you will. We have our street design criteria that says if you're in Rapid City, mm -hmm. which is going to be um, an urbanized area, curb and gutter is the expectation. Uh, and that's for many reasons. Does it convey stormwater rapidly away or off the street? Yes, it does. That's, that's a good thing when you have lots of traffic utilizing your streets. You want to be able to, to get rid of that water. Uh, there's a reason we have the stormwater quality manual too, and that is to prevent that water that's leaving uh, pervious surfaces from direct discharge into our creek without some sort of treatment. Uh, I think what they're trying to say is yeah, it's good for water quality, but they don't address the transportation issues that go along with having a rural road section adjacent to commercial property. Uh, there are safety issues with, with having open ditches. I don't know who grew up in a rural area. I did, but we all have friends or family that have left a rural road section and hit an approach traveling more than 30 miles an hour, and it's quite a, a dangerous situation. So... Um, yeah, what, what they're saying about water quality, you don't want it to run down curb and gutter directly into a creek. That's why our water quality manual states that you should have treatment areas for that or try to treat it as soon as it leaves the curb and gutter in a vegetated area. That's the best type of treatment and most cost effective. To have it directly to the road, there's still in the future going to have to be a pipe that transmits that somewhere at a collection point and takes it somewhere else. So um, I don't believe that the justification that they're um, saying should waive the requirements of all the road requirements. Okay. I'm out of time, so I'll yield the floor. Thank you. Oh, I think we can be flexible if you have more questions since we're only going to discuss two issues. Alderman Drew. Well, this is a timely discussion because I was just at the Sustainability um, Committee meeting last night, and the mayor was there. And we discussed um, the actual design criteria and quality manuals and those kinds of things that keep us from having uh, drainage ditches instead of curb and gutter. And that what people, uh, well, the, the guy from the South Coast School of Mines whose major is um, uh, in water dispersal and stormwater control, he uh, said that this is the way of the future. We're going to be seeing more and more of these drainage ditches because they're just, they make sense for cleaning the water naturally. I, you know, I'm, I'm not a major in that, but I do think it's very interesting for someone to talk about sustainability in a new way. And are we going to do it right away? I'm not sure, Kent. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do this right away. But I think it's the right thing to do. And I think as we're looking towards the future, you know, it might not always be a good idea to get rid of our stormwater and see it as a problem instead of a resource. And those are some of the things we talked about last night where we will be changing direction, I think, not maybe this year, but within the next 10 years on how we treat stormwater and how we're going to use that resource instead of um, just funneling it underground and saying, bye, you know, wherever you want to go, wherever you end up. And also that, you know, uh, Kent, I'd like to ask you another question if you could come up here for a second because you know more about this than I do. I also understand you were working on some of this kind of design around the new RAI building, the Rural America Initiatives buildings. Is that right? That's correct. So tell me a little bit about that project. Well, that project is uh, actually has been um, the, the beneficiary of an EPA grant that was sought by School of Mines specifically for the Freeland Ranch REI model. And it, it, it centers itself and incorporates the primary um, analysis how to deal with most uh, uh, runoff from the REI site, which will obviously have a fair amount of parking lot and so forth. And they've come up with a number of ways to mitigate the, the flow, significantly reduce the flow just by smart stormwater management. Uh, it, generally speaking, Freeland Ranch uh, at this time uh, doesn't intend nor foresee that all the streets up there will be vegetated ditches. It, it may not be practical there. 
however, I will say that where we can utilize green spaces and, and some vegetated ditches uh, to treat or absorb the stormwater runoff before it gets down to the de detention pond we've designed, um, we do look at it as a, as a, a very important alternative in addition to the, the uh, conventional uh, stormwater sewer, or excuse me, gutter and curb type apparatus. I'm more interested in, in the vegetated um, ditches. And so when you're talking about that, applying that same logic from the RAI project to the Samus Trail, is that what we're looking at here? Yeah, yes, exactly. The same logic, and it's, it's not even just a logic or a theoretical logic or, or the, the subject of a couple of uh, limited tests. This is very well established, adopted by the EPA as the preferred way to re remove stormwater off of streets period. There are a number of cities around the country that have adopted this as their primary way of stormwater treatment uh, when, when possible. Uh, so in this case, where you have the vegetated ditches that already exist, and of course we'll have to make sure that they just don't create two little ponds on both sides of Samus, it will have positive drainage away, but part of that positive drainage does go across Comerford's land and down to their little stock pond. So the water that gets discharged, I would much rather be and it currently goes there still, but I'd much rather be any additional discharge that is at least concentrated uh, coming off of now a paved surface that when it comes off and puts it on somebody's ranch land that it's there in the best quality it can be. And I, I think this would, would really help in that. Yeah, excuse me just a second. So, um, so when you're thinking about the way you're gonna handle this, are you guys planning on any development further down the road? I mean, you've got that whole area out there so you would need sewer and water. No, oh, absolutely. Now the sewer and water, as it was mentioned earlier, all of the sewer, water, other utilities, and stormwater drainage, all 100% are serviced by um, what the apparatus is in Moon Meadows Drive that was just built by TIF 70. Okay. So the, the increase in stormwater in, into the ditches on each side of Samus Trail uh, the increase in runoff will be negligible because it'll all be pointing towards uh, Moon Meadows Drive to go into that oversized storm sewer system. The other thing is for future development, all along that entire way, all along the entire way of that whole area we own uh, is designed to be serviced in that same fashion. We don't, we won't ever, our subdivision, our, our, our development will not need to be serviced or fed in any, any way by Samus Trail at all. The only time I see that may happen is if Frank Comerford, the rancher, decides in the future someday to develop it. And to me, uh, yeah, that would be a head start to have the, the, the you know, part of the sidewalk and the pavement in. And, uh, and then knowing that that's what, whatever's going to happen on the other side of the road, uh, we'll have fresh water and sewer fully inspected and, and brought to standards at that time. If okay, ever. I'm, I'm out of time, Kent. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I have no motion on the floor, and I currently have no speakers in the queue. I apologize. Restless? You give a lawyer a microphone, and he just can't stop. So. Can't kill those. <laughs> Thank you. May I ask Dale Tech some questions, please? Yes, sir. Uh, and Kent, I might have it. I, I'm a little bit confused here. Um, We have Moon Meadows Drive, and, the, and then now we're talking about Samus, and we talk about platting just a middle lot, and I don't see a middle lot. Is, are we talking about just platting lot two of block, of block two? Is, is, is that the 700 feet we're talking? Mr. Or, are we, or are we talking about Samus, a length of Samus Trail that equals the length of Moon Meadows Drive? You. I, I, I'm just trying to whoever I'm, I'm a little disappointed I in the I don't feel like I have enough information to really make a good decision uh, today but today. but let's so I'm gonna ask enough questions to figure this out yes he uh, the, currently they're just proposing to plat lot two which is um, not necessarily in the center of the development but uh, to the east are a bunch of I believe proposed townhome lots 
and then to the west would be lot one, which I believe is a commercial lot. That okay, okay so that's the 700 feet. So we're not, we're not talking about a distance that equals the entire length. The correct. entire length of Samus Trail that would match Moon Meadows. Correct. We're talking about it. Okay. So what is the scoop on all these little lots that aren't not being platted? On, on, on the east side of this lot too. They're just not being platted, so then that, that avoids the ability to? C correct, that uh, is a, is a uh, it serves as the appropriate buffer in our opinion to have um, uh, hi higher density residential in the apartment complex, which is 160 units on 8.8 .8 acres. And then to the east of it, I believe are 10 uh, townhome units, five, uh, five uh, duplexes that someday would be built. So, and if that someday if that got platted, then you'd have to tie that north-south road in t from Moon Meadows into Samus. Would that be correct? At that point, uh, it would be tied in, correct? Okay. And at that point, then that would make the issue that these are dry moot, I would guess, because then, because then that would tie into what we're talking what, uh, what we're talking about. Okay. But okay. A matter of clarification, it does sure. the, the the healing way, which is the future street to the east. Okay, right there. Um, that would, uh, by what we know today, would intersect with Samus Trail. It would tee into it. Uh huh. Um, the the uh, water and sewer, etc., would still be serviced from the north off of the Moon Meadows Drive area. Um, but you know that was an, another another aspect of, of this uh, of this whole project that at the time of original intent and design the not only was Samus Trail we did not anticipate the the reconstruction or the the construction of a, a full city compliant street of Samus Trail uh, nor did we have Healing Way but that, that's that's a maybe a, an a, a irrelevant point at this time. But um, cer certainly, uh, we don't know when that will be the case that the uh, townhomes, uh, uh, we would probably end up selling that land um, for to a third party. Okay. Well, you know, and I, obviously, you know more about the TIF. You're the one on the hook for the TIF. I just assume that the more development, the more, the more and the faster this develops, the sooner you're off the hook on the TIF. Correct. So... Um, One of the questions I have, you know, on the last situation we had like this, we talked, in my mind, I think about, well, if there's ever going to be sewer, it's going to be, you need you need it under the asphalt. It can be because we put the manholes in the street, correct? Uh, I, I see the sewer as being more important to me personally because I, I see this developing a uh, little bit quicker. Um, but so I see the sewer being more important than the water because it's, you know, it would be a shame to dig up perfectly good asphalt later on to, to, to bury sewer. So I'm not sure where I'm sitting on it, so I'll, I'll let somebody else talk. Thank you, Mr. Estes. Once again, I currently have no motion on the floor. And although um, not very normal, if committee members need more time to study this before sending on a recommendation that is a suitable reason to use forwarding to council without recommendation. Do you have any further speakers? Oh, you're trying, Darla? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got Follow it. Please. Um, I move to send this to council without recommendation. I have a motion by Drew, second by Estes to go ahead and send this to council without recommendation. Any further discussion or further questions for the applicants? Mr. Nordstrom. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Kent, uh, uh, just to let you know where I'm at on this, I have not supported anyone yet that I can recall. Maybe I have supported an, an appeal, but usually I do not uh, support any kind of an appeal because I feel that it's very that it's affecting future users, uh, future rate payers, and it also takes an effect or will see an effect on the, on the CIP budget as well. 
because the money's got to come from somewhere, and somehow somebody's got to install all of these uh, uh, utilities, uh, curb and gutter, et cetera, all that, uh, including the lighting. So the money's got to come from somewhere, and that's the main, main reason why I'm concerned in those areas. So uh, it's not against you or anything sure. like that. It's just that um, that's my position that I've held it. To, I'm trying to hold to that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nordstrom. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion is to send to council with that recommendation. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number Thank 17 you. is a request from Tyler Shad to make street improvements within section line right of way located approximately off Pinedale Circle um, for a single access to a single family residence to be located in Pennington County, which includes construction of a large embankment immediately upstream of city limits. <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes. I have some items I'd like to show the uh, committee, if that'd be okay. And yes, then I please. believe the applicants here as well, if you have any questions or if he has anything to say. So. This will hopefully give you some idea of where this project is located. Uh, as you can see by all the little black dots all over, we're looking in a uh, pine forested area on the very west side of town. Um, the parcel in question is right in the center of this map and is in, is in Pennington County, is not in the City of Rapid City corporate limits. Um, it's in the Pinedale Heights area with the Westbury Trails to the west, uh, Nemo Road way to the north, and the uh, Guard Camp to the south. Uh, the section line uh, improvements that the applicant is requesting uh, permit for is located right on the south uh, east, if you will, corner of his property. Um, with that being said, I've got a, a map a plan of what he's proposing to do that we can discuss here quickly. The section line road that he's proposing to build is in this area and that is what is in front of you today is to uh, either grant or deny approval of a permit to make improvements in a public right-of-way within the city of Rapid City. Uh, we've met with the applicant numerous times, worked with their engineer uh, in regards to improvements in the section line as well as this large amount of fill uh, which is in a canyon area uh, shown on the map to the north there. Uh, one reason we had concern with that is it's located immediately upstream of corporate limits of Rapid City with a lot of residential housing located downstream. Uh, staff was concerned with the amount of fill being placed in a very large uh, canyon, if you will. It's about 30 feet deep, uh, quite wide. Uh, the, uh, the applicant uh, hired an engineer, sized a culvert sizing. He's even upsized that from what the engineer uh, computed to convey the 100-year flow, uh, has provided slopes that appear to be stable um, with the associated erosion uh, control. So the applicant has worked with staff. Uh, this is going to be a high profile project. Uh, once he gets in there and starts doing work, many of the neighbors are going to be asking what's going on. Uh, he, uh, as I said, has, has worked with city staff as long as his engineer is hired. Um, so the items in front of you, for notification as well as action that this is going to be fairly high profile but it appears that he's addressed most of the items if not all the items that staff has brought uh, brought up so with that I'll stand for questions or if you have any questions for the applicant I believe he's here as well okay. Mr. Estes you hey, Madam Chair Dale I got one question so is this is this going to be a public street or a driveway 
No, as part of this, uh, it's acknowledged that this is for a single family residence uh, back in there. In fact, we've asked that since some of the road requirements were waived that he signs a covenant agreement that he will be responsible for the maintenance of um, the portion that he builds in public right of way. He will be responsible for maintaining that and the city will not. Is there also in, in any, any type of covenant agreement? As I understand, this is just for one one house that it, that this driveway would not support any subdivision of the property, or is that is that even possible to be put well, into agreement? Yes, currently the what's what's proposed shown does not meet city criteria for a road network. So uh, that's one of the reasons that it's um, been identified that this is for a single family residence. And the uh, applicant agrees to that. I don't have any other questions right now. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Tech, do we have any environmental concerns with the amount of dust and things that would be happening with the fill in this area during the construction phase? Well, once again, it's, it's a construction project. It's going to be a, a major undertaking. There will be, you know, I can't speak to whether there will be um, out of the ordinary amount of fugitive dust emission I don't anticipate that if it's done properly um, once again the the major fill is not in city limits it's located in uh, Pennington County uh, he will have to obtain an, an appropriate permit from the county to do the work on his property for that volume of, uh, of fill does the same air quality standards apply in this situation as it would normal rapidity project? I don't know if we've got extraterritorial jurisdiction outside of our corporate limits for air quality. I don't believe so. I believe the only permitting that we do is within our corporate limits. But it's a lot of it's a lot of fill. So that, that's that's my the one thing. What do you think, Wade? If our air quality program applies in this area, I'd have to do a little check. Okay. And will this have any sort of effect on any of the Rapid City residents, this project and the construction of, of this right away? Will that have any, any uh, negative impact on the residents? Well, I can't speak to whether or not it'll have a negative impact. Okay. Certainly it's section line right of way, the intent, the, uh, intended use for section line right of way is for road access. Mm -hmm. um, I know that it doesn't really show up on this map very well, but there's an existing house that's located approximately right there. Uh, I believe the applicant has spoke to the property owner and has some sort of acknowledgement that this is going to happen. So, Can we have the applicant come up to the podium if you don't mind? If you would just state your name for the rec for the record, if you don't mind. Tyler Shad, I'm the property owner. All right. Hey, as you go through this project, are you are you mindful about the impact to the neighbors around you? Um, oh yeah, definitely. Um, the process you can't really see on these plans too, but as far as dust control and, and that sort of thing, um, you, I have a bunch of. Um, what I'm going to do is have a bunch of trees planted, wildflowers, and that kind of thing once the, the process is done. So there'll be a lot of vegetation bringing it back to a natural state in a sense to keep from any dust. Obviously during construction, um, you know, I'll, I'll have a water truck and that kind of thing to keep, keep that dust down. Um, I don't anticipate that much of a dust problem in the air just because of the fact of it's a, it's a ravine, you know, naturally it's, it's regulated, but, um, yeah, so okay. right. I don't know if that answered your question. But. Oh, that, that, that's good. That's all the questions I have yeah. for now. Thank okay. you. Alder Women, Drew. Do we have a motion on the floor yet? We do not. Uh, move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Drew, second by Estes. You still have the floor if you'd like. Okay. Mr. Nordstrom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a clarification, if I may ask Wade a question or two on the uh, covenant. Currently. Sure. Wade, have, have you, 
Were you part of being in the negotiations of this uh, covenant agreement? Yes. And is there anything in there that you see that uh, that you would you're not totally comfortable with, or if there's anything in this covenant agreement you would rather see a rewrite? Um, no, I think I think it addresses uh, staff's concerns. Uh, basically, the idea of the covenant is it's this is going to be a private driveway while it's in the right of way. Uh, it's not a it's not built to city street standards. It's not going to function as a public street. So uh, it puts maintenance and and liability on the property owner to to maintain it and just keep another, track of it. Another point of clarification is that if Mr. Shadow decides to sell the property, that information goes along with the property. Uh, this covenant goes along with the property, correct? Right. That's Does correct. that get revealed during the uh, closures, uh, property closure? It, it would show up in any title search then. So yeah, if, if somebody came to buy it and there was title insurance or a title search, uh, it's, it's public record. So if the future property owners, potential future property owners, uh, took over the, on this property, they, they would become aware that, it, that they have total responsibility and not putting any liability upon the city? Correct. Thank you. I do have a motion on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Nordstrom, to um, approve this request. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. We are at the end of our calendar. If anyone would like to make a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Estes, second by Solomon. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Aye.